Hey guys, this is Cartwin to see today with my problems with Disney princesses. Well, there's so many problems, this is going to take a while, and I'm sorry, I'm going to waste probably like 15 minutes of your life. Anyways, okay, so what happens is there are a bunch of princesses, and they're all spoiled brats. And they all have their magical little animal slaves doing all their dirty work while they're complaining, Oh, my life sucks. Oh, I hate my life. I would love to be a princess and have little animal slaves that did all my work while I laid around and did nothing. You kidding me? That'd be amazing. But that's pretty much how every princess goes, and then they always find their true love in like five minutes. They don't even know him for a day, and then they get married. Like, what is this? You don't know. No, that is not real life. Real life is you like a guy, you wait a long time to see if you still like him, trying to hint it to him. When he gets the hint, he ends up being like, oh, you suck. And then, after doing that for like three times, then you just completely think, oh, I'm forever alone, accept it, and then suddenly this, this guy angel comes down and then steals your heart, and then you understand why no other guy worked out. That is how love works. All from experience, thank you. And, like, in Snow White, there, she's, there's so many problems with Disney movies, okay? Snow White, first two minutes of the movie, they're like, oh, she's so innocent, she's so beautiful. And she gets hunted by the queen's human hunter. And... The queen threatens the hunter, if he did not kill Snow White, he would be killed. If I was in that situation to kill somebody, or else I would be killed, if it was nobody I really knew, I'd be all for it. I want to live. If it was like someone that I loved deeply, then I would let them escape. But he did not know Snow White that well. And then he's just like, <gasps> Snow White, I love you so much. You must stay. You must go. You must go, not stay. You must go into the woods with the trees, with the eyes that try to touch your shoulders and you flip out like a little princess that you are. So she runs in the woods and suddenly these trees with eyes start attacking her. She gets scared. She starts to cry. And the, again, with the little animal slaves, they come over and they're like, oh, poor little Snow White, meh, 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 meh. let's just lead you to a magical house in the middle of nowhere. So she barges in that house, looks around, and sees that there is, like, yeah, I know, sorry about that, my mom. And she sees that there's, like, seven beds in there. Nothing goes through her head that's just a big red warning flag saying, oh, I shouldn't be here. She just decides to go lay down in a bed and fall asleep. She wakes up and there's seven men staring down at her. Now, if I was in that situation, I would flip out and be really afraid for my life. You don't know who these guys are. You don't know what they do. You don't know if they're good or bad. Seriously, what the heck? And then, not only that, but then... You go, you know them, you introduce them, or they introduce themselves to you. And what, what just so happens is their names coordinate with their strongest personality. Yeah, what kind of mom names their kid dopey, grumpy, happy? What? No, you just, just, no, you don't name your kid grumpy, you don't name your kid happy. <laughs> Sorry. You don't just know. You don't name them after emotions. You wonder why they all have self-esteem problems, guys. And then they know each other for like less than two minutes. The little animal slaves keep doing the chores while, while Snow White's over here downstairs with all the seven men singing and dancing. So she stays in their house and there's probably very bad things that go on in that movie that they can't show because it's Disney. And then one day... This really old, creepy-looking lady comes to your house and offers you food and tries to shove it down your throat. So like the stupid girl she is, she decides to take an apple from this creepy lady. You have no idea who she is, no, and she looks creepy. Like, this girl has problems seeing red flags. And then she basically eats the apple and she is like in a coma. 
the seven men are like, oh no, our sick lady is dead. We're so sad. So they put her in a glass coffin. Then, just so happens, it just so happens that this prince comes riding through the woods who looks so much like Cinderella's prince, it's ridiculous. And he sees this dead lady. And he looks at her, he's like, she's so pretty, what is wrong? And the seven men are like, she's dead, but not really. He's like, oh, she's pretty. I, just, I guess I'm going to make out with a dead lady that's been sitting in a glass coffin for ten days. Wow, what kind of logic do these people have? So then this lady magically wakes up. And the prince is like, let's go and get married at my castle because I love you. And I've known you for less than 30 seconds. And I made out with your dead body and then you magically came back to life. Oh my god. That would be so weird if this world had Disney logic. Alright, so that was pretty much sums up Snow White. So now we move on to Cinderella. Cinderella has a stepmom. She's a little bit of a butt. But, like, you could deal with that if you had your little mice and bird animal slaves again. Going around the house and doing your laundry and helping you brush your hair and put on your clothes. I wish I had animals that could do that. I wish my cat, my two ferrets, and my dog, and my frog, and my fish could all magically do my chores, all magically help me pick out my clothes in the morning, help me sneak to turn on Wi-Fi, because that would be amazing, and help me clean. That'd be amazing. I'd set the fish on the dishes, my cat cleaning the floor, my dog cleaning up my room, and the ferrets cleaning up the bathroom, and, and I would just cook because I like cooking. Like, what? No! That, that, that animal thing, you can wish, but it just will never happen. And then she wakes up and she's complaining about her life, even though she does no chores whatsoever because her slaves are doing them. Complaining, 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 little brat. And then basically there's this ball. And her two stepsisters go, even though they're uglier than her, they have really, really snotty attitudes. And I guess Cinderella does, but she's not as bad as them. And so they're just like, oh, let's leave the pretty girl at home. And so Cinderella runs outside and she starts crying. She's like, wah, wah, poor me, I'm missing a dance. Wah. Suddenly, this magical old lady shows up that magically knows her problems, magically knows how to fix it, and magically has a solution right then and there. So this girl trusts this old lady that she met less than 30 seconds ago. And she's just like, oh, I get to go to the ball. Oh, oh, I'm so special. So she goes and sings another song. Again, she narrates everything she does. And boom, there's a pumpkin coach. And just like, you don't ride in pumpkins. That's just, no. And then she turns mice, I think, into horses, which is not logical at all. And she gets this beautiful dress, and she ends up getting her hair done. Blah, 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 blah. Little princess rides down all the way to the castle. And this prince is being so spoiled because he cannot find the right woman. He's like, oh, I need a right woman. Like, if I was a princess and I had to pick out a prince, I would pick a person that was more for personality than looks. But I would just happen to be lucky and got a boyfriend that was really, really hot and handsome and has an amazing personality. But he's just really picky with the looks. So this guy in Cinderella is so picky with the looks. So he sees Cinderella walk in. He's like, oh, you're beautiful. I love you. They've known each other for what, two minutes? Ugh. And they, then they danced for three hours. And... And Cinderella drops the shoe, which I think she did on purpose. Like, quote-unquote, out of a song. It's not an accident, she left the shoe on purpose. Long story. And he's like, wait, wait. He takes the shoe, and the love of his life, he just so happens to not remember her face or how she looked. So he decides to go out through the entire kingdom looking for her. And 
Okay, there's several problems with this. One, if you truly love someone, you would at least remember their face. Two, there's so many people with the same shoe sizes, he could pick a person without the same face, but the same shoe size, and she would be automatically a little princess. What? And, um, me and my boyfriend were actually talking about this the other day, and what happened is, in the original one, the stepsisters started cutting off their feet in order to try to fit their feet into the glass slippers. And then, magically, these two crows come out and peck out their eyes. And there's just, there's just problems written all over that. I mean, I would not want to get a fake foot after cutting off my own foot to try to fit it in a slipper. I'm not that desperate. To be a princess. No thank you. So basically he finds the princess and they get married after knowing each other for less than a day. Again, Disney logic. Then we move on to Aladdin. Again, spoiled princess complains about her life. She doesn't even do any chores in that movie. And she has the most amazing badass companion. Because this companion is a tiger. And I would love to have a tiger as a pet. I'd just be afraid, oh, I don't know, it would rip my face off. And then in the middle of that movie somewhere, she's just like, oh, I'm afraid to go on the magic carpet, Aladdin. I'm afraid. How can you be afraid if you have a freaking tiger as a pet? Just, no. That's, you have more chance of dying with a tiger than going on a magic carpet. And anyways... There's Aladdin, and he's a poor boy, and he somehow gets this magical little exotic monkey. He probably spent all his money on that monkey, because that monkey's amazing. And in Aladdin, there is Genie. And in that movie, Genie makes a reference about Aladdin wearing third century clothes. So, if you think about it, Aladdin is set ahead of time, especially with Genie making references to other people that we know today, and him making that reference, oh, Aladdin, those are thir so third century clothes, why are you wearing those? Aren't they in a post-apocalyptic world that only just so happen to have Aladdin's kind of people live? Probably, and it would explain magic carpets, because they would be flying machines, and then the lamp, I don't know what that would be. But then they'd have magical things. And also the magical robotic parrots that just so happen to understand and talk English. Anyways, so then there's Jafar. He's a creepy old guy and he's just like, I hate everyone. They must die. Talk about negativity, dude. Just take a chill pill and enjoy life for once. You just know he doesn't really have a reason for hating anybody. And... Basically, it's the same thing as in every Disney movie. They, oh, well, I guess Aladdin and Jasmine knew each other for a while, so that makes a little bit more sense. But Jasmine's a gold digger. She really is. Because she would not go near a poor boy. And when that poor boy became rich as a prince, she's just like, Oh, Aladdin. Hey, how's it going? It's just no, just no. You don't, you don't date people because, because they have money. No, not okay. And then, it's just so many problems with that movie. I could go on for hours with problems with Aladdin. So then we move on to Beauty and the Beast. Alright, so there's this lady, and again, she narrates everything she does, blah 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 blah, her dad gets captured, or something, I haven't seen this movie in years, and she ends up going to look for her father, and she ends up going in a castle, again, she's intruding in a castle, she has no idea who lives there, and she sees that there is this half-man, half-wolf guy, or bear, or beast, there's like this evil beast guy. She gets frightened, but he keeps her there, which is very creepy. And eventually she has all the dishes talk to her, and the clock, and the little lamp thing. So not only is she forgetting to take her medication, but she's falling in love with a beast. A furry man. 
A man plus an animal. This has to be some kind of bestiality. I mean, are you kidding me? No, you just, no, you don't fall in love with animals that kind of love. Like, you just, no. And my mom, I was arguing with my mom about this the other day, and she's like, it's Disney, it's innocent. I'm like, oh yeah, so Belle's a gold digger because she falls in love with him because he owns the castle. And she ends up being, like, be some kind of bestiality, I'm sure, because she fell in love with this half-animal dude. And it just went on forever and ever and ever. And, yeah, that's as much as I remember, actually. Alright, and then we move on to Pocahontas. There's not much on her, but... Okay, so in the beginning of the movie, there's her... She has perfect hair, she jumps off a 200 foot cliff, lands in the water perfectly without it being hurt, which is not logical. Again with the animal slaves, she has Miku, uh, not Miku, 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 meh, Miko, and the little bird thing. And then in the beginning of the movie, there's this guy called John Smith, and he's just like, oh, I'm gonna invade on this land, and I'm gonna kill any person I see on it. That's just wonderful. Might as well give them a bomb in their cake and just tell them to enjoy. It's just, you don't do that to people. And then, they end up falling in love, and I like their story. Their story is cute, but they still fell in love way too fast. <laughs> and, like, there's not much wrong with that movie other than the talking tree. Again, she needs to stop eating all those random fungi and the random mushrooms. Seriously, she's starting to hallucinate. And I wish I could totally run and have the little magical leaves and the little spirit things walk, like, run past me. It'd be fun. I would use that power. I'd be like, spirit powers, activate! It'd be so awesome. And now that I think about, oh, no, 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 there's one more princess I was getting. Rapunzel. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, oh boy. Which is tangled. Okay, so this giant blonde girl has really, really, really long hair. That would be a pain in the brush to comb. How would you keep all that brushed? Because that would take all day by itself to brush. And the one where... This is the one, I'm doing the Disney version of Tangled, or Rapunzel, where they start singing again. They always narrate what they do. When she's brushing her hair, she goes, Flower, cream, and glow, let your power shine, heal what has been hurt, bring back what once was mine. Was mine. I do know that song from heart. I watched that movie way too much when it came out. <sighs> and so there's this evil lady that looks nothing like her and teases her all the time and it's just ugh. And this guy just randomly shows up. She did the right thing by hitting him in the side of the face with a with a pan because the guy I did not know showed up in my house. I would have taken more than a pan to his head. I would have just hit him in the face with a baseball bat. So she decides after knowing him for five minutes to go on an adventure with him. And he's going to take her to see the lights. And they do so. She somehow makes it for like a week without brushing her hair and it still stays perfect. She, they go on and on and on. They meet this horse, uh, Maximus I think his name is. He has serious problems. He, like, he is a little too determined to get, uh, Flynn Rider. Or, uh, I can never remember his name. Eugene. Flynn Rider and Eugene are the same person, just different names. I just call him, uh, Flynn Rider. Anyways. So, Maximus is like, trying to beat the crap out of this guy, and this guy's like, Oh, you stupid horsey, come and get me, meh, 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 And Rapunzel ends up persuading the horse that has jealousy issues to not, like, be dumb. The guy 
they go and they realize they're in love and they sing that song that goes like and at last I see the light and it's like the fog has lifted that song don't ask how I know that and they fall in love and at least theirs makes sense because it's like three days but you still wouldn't fall that deep in love I don't think I mean I had a crush before I went out with my boyfriend I had a crush on him for like five months and I and then I had took forever to, for me to speak up and be like hey I kind of like you you know <laughs> yeah long story with that and so the guy gets captured he's gonna get hung and these pirates magically save him and him and Maximus work together to help get Rapunzel back Rapunzel fights back and then wha-bam Flynn Rider gets stabbed and it's depressing I'm not gonna lie whenever I see this part in the movie I cry and he frees Rapunzel by cutting her hair so then the lady can't sing with the thing so she dies and he's dying and she's crying because they love each other and I start crying at that point obviously he dies she sings the song a tear comes that just so happens to have power left and he comes back to life and they get married and I love that movie so much I have one last thing about Disney this is not Disney Princess necessarily, but it kind of is with Princess Leia. Yes, I'm referring to Star Wars. I mean, they have freaking Star Wars made with Disney now. Are you kidding me? Soon it's gonna be all like Darth Vader singing a whole new world with like, I can show you the galaxy. Shining, shimmering splendor. You just don't know. Just Disney, don't, don't do that, please. That would be terrible if you started to make them sing Disney songs. It's just like, oh my god. And then it'd be like, I've got the force in me. I got the force in me. I can hit your head with a metal pipe. Like, no, you just don't do that. Please, Disney, just don't, don't ruin it. Don't ruin Star Wars. I like Star Wars. Just don't ruin it. That would be terrible. And then if you made Princess Leia, like the crazy little, you know, <laughs> that she is, then you're doing a good job because that's how she's like in the first movie. But other than that, I swear to God, if you make Chewbacca, start going like, Chewbacca, Chewbacca, be our guest. Like, oh, don't do that. Don't do that, please, for the love of God. Oh, that'd be terrible. I would cry. But, yeah, there's your Disney princesses and Disney Star Wars for ya. And my thoughts on them and my problems with them and what I think would be funny. So... This is Cart123, and I hope you enjoyed. Uh, have a good night.